Hi, my name is Stephanie, and these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband attorney, Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. Call Mr. Sperling at 713 229 0770. Call my dad, daddy. Two guys call in, they work at DNA testing centers. One guy had to quit, one guy still works there. He told me 40% of the children are not the man's child. 40%. 40%. He said 40%. Somebody cool and Lori. it's well, usually make DNA testing it's, it, and it's two, mandatory. It's two scenarios. It's where the woman, they, the person's getting a DNA test because the woman claims that is their child. Turns out it's not. The other one is where the parent is on the deathbed and makes a confession. Oh, or God. they need a health, they need a liver transplant, blood transfusion, and the blood type, there's no way that that can actually be the father. So then they find out because of medical reasons, you mean that's not my father? then the father finds out from that way he said it took such a toll on him that he could no longer do it because he would be sitting on the phone counseling the men and the grown children who these women falsely accused we see it on more we see it on paternity court but yet we say men need to be held accountable What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to the broadcast. I hope everybody is having a great morning, noon, evening, afternoon, where you are. My name is Dennis Sperl and welcome to the page. Uh, I'd like to be, give a big shout out to who we got up in here. Uh, Broken Blade, Jamal Smith, RDD, shout out to you. Thank you guys for your membership. Big shout out to Antonio Schuler. Thank you so much. And Jamal Smith. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. We're going to talk about a, a fan favorite here in these YouTube streets with the fellas. Whoa, big shout out to Ex 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 Exodia, the Forbidden One. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for the $49.99, baby. I might give you a new pair of, of, of shoes or something. Because, you know, Papa need brand new shoes, uh, like James Brown said. But, man, look, so today, I want you guys to uh, – understand that we have to begin to make changes in how we think about women, how we think about the society that we live in so that we can better uh, deal with um, the situations that arise. Now, I want you guys to check this video out and I played it at the beginning, but we're going to be talking about paternity fraud. Okay. Now, um, Here's the thing, and I'm going to share this screen with you guys. Y'all hit the number one, but can you guys hear me clearly? Uh, let me know if you can hear me clearly. I'm going to try not to get too angry and upset <laughs> and, and, and yell my voice into non-existence like I've been doing the past couple of sessions that we've had here. I was asked by the Maryland General Assembly 
up in Baltimore to uh, by Senator Watson, uh, one of the people on his committee uh, who's working with him to discuss mandatory paternity tests, okay? Um, here's the thing. Mandatory paternity tests and the hearing that they held for it is a hotly contested idea. Why? Well, what happened during the hearing is that the feminists showed it up. And after hearing how much of a problem paternity fraud was, their response was, but if you do this and make it mandatory, in other words, what the, let me read what it says, requiring when a child is born at a health facility, the attending physician to offer the presumed father of the child the option to take a paternity test. All they're doing is requiring that he be made the offer to take the paternity test orally and in writing before a birth certificate form is completed for the child. That's it. They're not saying we're going to force mandatory testing. We're going to grab that kid by his, by the scruff of his neck and force him to take a test. That's not what they're saying. They're merely saying we're going to offer the dad, the presumed father, the option of taking a test in verbally and in writing. That's it. That's all they're saying. And the feminists had a fit. They said, if you do this, you're going to destabilize families. That's what they said. They said, you're going to destabilize families by offering men who are presumed to be the father the option of taking a paternity test. Think about that. And on top of that, and this is how they concluded, this is a real live hearing. They told this senator who was conducting this hearing on February 15th at 1 p.m., just believe her. That's what they said. For real. This is what was said. Just believe her. Now, there was another one piece of legislation that came before. Shout out to Antonio Schuler. He said, the truth hurts. Thank you, too, brother. <laughs> Driver's licenses. You know how when you get back on your child support, what do they say? They take your driver's license away from you. Well, how can you pay your back child support if you don't have a driver's license you can't drive? How do you do that? You can't. Unless you just drive without the license, and then what happens? You get a ticket, you get warrants, and you go to jail. The vast majority of men, especially black men who are in prison right now, started off with some low-level drug possession like weed, weed charge, or they ended up there because they didn't have a driver's license, driving on a suspended license, which turned the warrants. I got a cousin who spent probably all of 10 years in jail in, in, in California state penitentiaries and correctional facilities for low level offenses, starting from driving infractions, driving without a license, driving without a license again. And that led to a whole bunch of other things because life becomes frustrating when you can't work and you don't have any money and you see people passing you by. So it's important. What is this saying? This other proposed law, where are my people from Maryland at? This is what they're trying to do. And I want to get behind this Senator Watson. Okay. This hearing is going to take place on April 5th at 1 PM. So it hadn't happened yet, but this is what they're saying establishing a certain exception to the authority of child support administration to notify the motor vehicle administration of an individual support arrearages for the purpose of suspending the individual's driver's license or privilege to drive 
if the obligor's income is below 250% of the federal poverty guidelines, authorizing the Child Support Administration to consider certain information in determining the income of the obligor under the act. In other words, if you're poor, they're not gonna take your driver's license you just suspend your driver's license. That's basically what that's saying. Makes good sense, right? Because you know what these women do. You get back on your child support, or you get a new woman, then you get back on your child support. What do they do? They do everything to try to destroy you. Where's the lie? Am I lying? Hmm? Now I want you to kind of take a look at what the poverty guidelines are. Poverty guidelines for the 48 contiguous states and the District of Columbia. That simply means every state except Hawaii and Alaska. And this is how they determine it. If you're a person in a family, person in the family's household, poverty guideline. If one person and you live in a house and you make $14,580, you qualify for this. You're living in poverty. Two people living in a house, you make less than $19,720, you qualify. Three people living in a house, you make $24,860 or less, you qualify. You're poor. And it goes all the way up to eight people. Okay? Since families with more than eight people at $5,140, uh, for each additional person. So anybody who makes less money than that, they're not going to take your driver's license from you. Okay? Or at least that's one of the things they will consider. But I think, and this is House Bill 0326. Maryland. Okay? State of Maryland. All of you guys in Maryland, I want you to get behind this Senator Watson. I want you to let them know you support this. Anybody in the DMV area, actually. Because if it happens in Maryland, it can happen in Virginia and some of the other places nearby. But we're making progress. They reached out to me on this. And I'm so proud of my work. I'm so proud of the work that I'm doing as an active practicing attorney. Uh, you know, people, they can still call me and they know how to get at me. And, and I'm there for them. All right. Now, here's the thing. And I want you to understand something. Um, paternity fraud is a real issue. And so I want you guys to know how real the issue is. Now, about 10 years ago, there was a study that came out in the UK that said 30% of the men who were tested through the, through the court system were determined that they weren't the fathers of those children. Okay, now that was about 10 years ago. This is from DNA Diagnostic Center. Paternity fraud, the tough realities men must face. This is from when? What's the date on that? October 25th, 2021. Check this out. With wide availability, and I'm going to make it bigger because I want you guys to read along with me. And look, let me just say this. This is not going to be exciting. I'm not going to be yelling tonight, I hope. All right? It's going to be a nice, boring uh, <laughs> Dennis Sperling broadcast. But I think you need to be well aware of the subject matter, what's going on, because it affects men's. It affects men's rights. And you guys, you know, you want your nuts back, right? You want to you wanna be able to walk around America not being timid. You want to be able to live your life without fear of somebody putting some, you know, child support charges on you and robbing you in family court, right? You guys want to be men again, right? When you want to get this monkey that we call the judicial system off your backs, well, this is how we do it. We take our power back, fellas. All right? So, again, this is one of those bats and bricks that I give you to arm yourself so you can have these conversations. So you're, always, you're already going to know ahead of time 
what our opponents are going to do. And so you already know how they how to respond. Okay. So this is an important conversation. I don't expect to have a thousand people in here tonight. I'm happy to get whoever gets in here and those who are interested, you're interested. I get it. You see, I get it. It's boring. Everything can't be exciting and interesting and me yelling at the top of my lungs <laughs> on the internet as entertaining <laughs> as that is. All right. But uh, anyway, big shout out to Angel Griggs. He says, Uncle D, I like to know how to fund RL visitation centers because the ones this government gives us still don't let fathers, father or children the way we need uh, say change the subject or can't say that. Um, we probably need to have a, a, a better, more detailed conversation about that. Anybody who wants to schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me about something that complicated, hit me up at SperlingDennis at gmail.com. Um, you know, and also, before I get going good, y'all make sure y'all go to my uh, page. Go to the store and buy a T-shirt. I got some new T-shirts in here. Uh, go get a T-shirt. If you get a T-shirt, uh, let me know. I want to put it up. I want to put a picture of you up and make you famous. All right, so y'all go do that. But uh, let's let's get back to this work, okay? And again, if you want to schedule a conference with me, SperlingDennis at gmail.com. In addition to that, uh, I have books left. Please purchase my books. You can purchase them at uh, by emailing me at SperlingDennis at gmail.com, or you can go on to Amazon. I prefer you buying from me so I can get rid of these books that I have. Big shout out to Ashton Mulkey. Thank you so much, Ashton. I appreciate you for this uh, uh, super chat, uh, cash app contribution. Thank you so much. And uh, let's get back to this work, all right? Let's get on back to it because I want to get this out the way before uh, and, and free you guys up for the night. Shout out to my man, King Barracuda, who said, don't tell me that paternity fraud numbers have significantly increased. They have, and that's what I want to tell you guys about. It's, it's to the point now, it's ridiculous. So here's the thing. <clears throat> Let's read it. With the wide availability of affordable paternity tests, kits uh, online and at the local drugstores, more and more men today are making the choice to find out if the children they've been supporting are truly theirs. There's no doubt about it. DNA testing has been a game changer in the child support landscape. But here's the crazy thing, fellas. Still, men don't want to know. And that's something we're going to address tonight. Um, the she said, he said arguments about who father a child are not completely irrelevant, right? Not necessarily. Well, that depends. You got a DNA test. It is. Now, here's the thing. First, some paternity test stats. I want y'all to hear this. The American Association of Blood Banks, which accredits DNA testing labs released its findings about paternity testing in a landmark report in 1999. The report states that 30% of DNA paternity tests nationwide turned out negative. Here's what I want you to understand. Shout out to RDD. Let me explain this, okay? Well, let me read the rest of it. The tidal wave of outrage at this report's findings where do you think the outrage came from, fellas? <laughs> Who do you think was outraged? The tidal wave of outrage at this report's findings started out as rather a small ripple, but has grown bigger and bigger in the 17 years since, and with good reason. As more men have questioned paternity, they are finding that despite DNA evidence disproving a biological connection and that paternity fraud is recognized and handled as a criminal offense, the courts are not always willing to let men off the financial hook. Here's what they're saying. The American Association of Blood Banks, um, they accredit these labs. You're licensed to do this, you're licensed to do that, you're licensed to give DNA testing. Typically, men who have their children tested are doing it because they're suspicious that the child isn't theirs. So basically, what they found is, fellas, 
of the men who, were, who took the test because they were suspicious learned that they weren't the father. Think about that. If you got a room full of men who are suspicious that the child isn't theirs, Out of every 10 of those men, three men are paying for children that aren't theirs. That's basically what they're saying. Imagine how much money that is over a lifetime. They say you pay maybe a quarter million dollars to raise a child to the age of 17. For every child you look at that's not yours, you spend a quarter million dollars raising that child. Think about that. And they give us a few fact patterns here. They give us a few cases that they talk about. For years, singer Neo of California paid child support to an ex-girlfriend for a boy she claimed was his. A DNA, you know, you know, you guys know Neo, right? Y'all know Neo. Singer, happens to everybody. Doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, whatever, it happens to everybody. Neo paid child support to an ex-girlfriend for a boy she claimed was his. A DNA paternity test eventually proved he wasn't the biological father. Because the state of California considers any man to be the father if he puts himself out there as one, the mother can come after that man financially as if he were the biological father. Do y'all hear that? Did you guys hear that? Because he put himself out there. He said, this is my child. Even though we found out it's not my child, because you've been saying it's your child, guess what? You got to keep paying. So what does that tell you, fellas? That tells you you got to catch it early. You got to do something about it early. It's a trick bag. That's exactly right. Now, <clears throat> Case scenario number two, and, and that happened to a wealthy man. Imagine how much child support he was paying for this child. Okay? In 2010, and just so you guys understand, the stats are 80% in Jamaica. Yeah. Shout out to all my yardies. In Jamaica, it's 80%. 80% of the children tested in Jamaica because the father suspected they weren't the dad. 80% of those children don't belong to the men <laughs> who are alleged to be the father. Yeah, that's what's going on in Jamaica. These hoes ain't loyal, fellas. Okay? Just so you know. This is a serious problem. And so, see, the thing is, it's been going on since the beginning of time. And DNA is now bringing it all to an end. DNA testing. Okay? But it's not going to work unless you men grow some spines. Stop trying to be nice and go with it. Okay, Cody Marshall said, Jake put on some uh, hot sauce in the condom. Thank you so much for the super chat. Here's another case scenario. In 2010, the California Supreme Court refused to review a tough court decision for a homeless man <clears throat> whose name was Harry Wilburn. So way back in 1991, Wilburn was named as the father of a five-year-old child, even though he was never properly informed by the state. In other words, he never received notice. Probably wasn't served. He subsequently was ordered to pay child support. Despite the fact that a 2008 paternity test excluded him as a possible father and that he never acted as the father to the child, the court stated that the mother was entitled to back child support payments in the tens of thousands of dollars. This is a homeless man. 
Shout out to King Barracuda. He said, blood clot, bumble clot. <laughs> so again, fellas, this is how ruthless the system is. So it's on you to do something about it early. And don't sit back and allow this to happen. Again, like I said, they've elected me to help them out on this board in Maryland. I'm more than happy to help out. But it's going to require for you men to change your mindset. You're too goddamn nice. And this is all men. All of you men are too nice. You're so afraid of hurting these women's feelings, but they have no problems with hurting your pockets. And as long as they know they can get at your pockets with no repercussions, they're going to keep doing it. So there's no end in sight. And as long as we are living in America and we have this whore mentality that is pervasive, amongst modern women here of all races, you're going to have to take the steps to protect yourself and your future. Let's read case number three. Pennsylvania resident Michael L. was the subject of a heart-wrenching New York Times article back in 2005 when the tidal wave of paternity fraud awareness was really starting to grow. Okay, so back in the day, guys just assumed that the woman is right and, you know, women always know, you know, you had a bunch of simps, a bunch of men who just assumed that, oh, let's, you know, women are always right. And, you know, you're making a big deal. Just man up and be responsible. Men believed anything back then. Just stupid. Okay. Stupid. Well, what happened to him? Well, Mike L. divorced his wife, the mother of his daughter, when he discovered an affair and a paternity test proved that his daughter, that child, wasn't his. Can you imagine that? Here you are, you got this woman, you married her, you get a paternity test after you find out she's had an affair, so you got strike one and strike two. And then you file for divorce. But guess what happened? He paid child support and he nurtured his parental, he nurtured his parental relationship for years, even though he was not his daughter's biological father. So after he found out, he took the paternity test, divorced the woman, and he killed, he still took on the parental role. He continued to dutifully pay support until his ex decided to marry the man whom she claimed was a biological father. In other words, this broad got pregnant by another man and then ended up marrying him. Guess what? Mike, her first husband, filed paperwork to end his financial obligation to his daughter. But since the biological father would now be the household, would now be in the household. That's what he said. Well, you know, y'all be together. Knock yourself out. Okay? He ultimately discovered he loved the girl so much he couldn't deny legal paternity and risk losing all the contact with her. Soft. He was soft. That's not your child, man. And they wouldn't let him out of it. So your wife is getting a monthly stipend for you to help her take care of her child with this other man. That's how cold the laws are, fellas. But whose fault is that at the end of the day? It's his fault. You don't know how you're going to feel in 20 years after you paid 20 years of child support or to 18 years of child support. So go ahead and cut it off now. How you feel right now when you find out, I love this child, I love this child, but this is not your child. And so you're writing a check with your heart that your future wallet is going to have to pay for. You're creating a debt that your, your, your older self is going to have. The young man is creating a debt that the older man is going to have to pay for. More likely than not, fellas, you are not going to be happy 
four or five years go by, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years go by. Yeah, you might have been 25 when you found out she was cheating, and I'm going to be the daddy. But by the time you get 43, you're going to be like, damn, this is messing up my retirement money. Your feelings are going to change. So do what you have to do now to protect your older self. Here, listen to this. I want you to hear this out. What can men do to protect against paternity fraud? Padawar's articles mentions that the state statutes and the case law vary widely, but that many judges, as, in, as is evident in the cases mentioned above, decide that men, listen to this, this is how the judges think, whether they're married to the mother or not, must continue supporting their children no matter what the results of the paternity test may show. Ain't that something? If it's too late, you got to do it early. If a man has any doubts, listen, fellas, if a man has any doubts whatsoever about whether or not he is the father, he should consult with an attorney to determine how to best proceed. Unmarried men may choose not to sign an acknowledgement of paternity birth certificate and let the determination of return to be made through court. Let me explain something to you. If you have any doubts, I'm an attorney. Let me tell you, Gallup, I'm an attorney. And I'm telling you, if a man has any doubts whatsoever about whether or not he is the father, he should not first consult with an attorney to determine how to best proceed. He should first go down to the nearest Walgreens or CVS and get that DNA test and then grab that baby and swab that baby's mouth, stuff that Q-tip into that envelope and send it off. That's what he should do. That's what he should do. Quietly, stealthily, and don't tell that broad. That's what you should do, okay? If you are not married, to a woman. And she says she's pregnant for your baby. The technology now allows you to take prenatal DNA test. So the next time that lovely lady invites you to the ultrasound, when you get there, you ask that nurse whether or not they administer prenatal DNA test. And if that woman puts up any fuss, then you have grounds not to sign that paternity or birth certificate at the time that child is born. Let me run the play by you again, fellas. Your would-be baby mama tells you I'm pregnant. And you the daddy. The technology of 2023 allows for you to take a prenatal DNA test. Every hospital can do it. They reach in there with a long Q-tip and they swab the inside of that. And they get some of those, the, the inside of that, they get some of that uh, 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 DNA And they do it the same way. And they test before the child is born. You hear me? So now you're not hanging around there for nine months wondering if that baby is yours. You can go on with your life or you can prepare for your new child. But either way, You've already told her and established, I want a DNA test. We're not married. And you stand on that. And for some of you men, maybe perhaps, because you know y'all soft and weak and they expect you to be, bring your mama with you and your grandma with you. <laughs> Especially if you got one of them aggressive mothers, them aggressive grandmothers. Bring everybody to the ultrasound. 
Because it could be quietly and discreetly taken care of. This is if, hell, if, if you're not married especially. But as an unmarried man, you should never sign an acknowledgement of paternity or birth certificate before you get a paternity test. Let the court order it. My man, uh, Vereen, says they can actually do DNA tests through urine samples from the mother. There it is. There's no endangerment to the baby. Don't you sign that goddamn birth control birth certificate unless y'all married, man. Don't do it. Because once you do it, the time is ticking. You might do something that you end up regretting. You'll be writing them checks long after. You made that bad decision. Let me tell you what else is going on. Paternity, this is what they're saying. Paternity fraud is real, but society and the courts are demonstrating that the very definition of fatherhood is changing. Do you know that they don't care that you're not the biological father? If you call yourself spending time with that child is not yours, and you develop emotional ties between you and that child, or at least they say so. They saying that's as important as biological relationship. And they weigh the legal paternity decisions based on how close that child, that child says he is to you. Biological relationships be damned. What does that mean? What is that telling you? It's telling you they don't give a damn about the real father. They think men are replaceable. They don't think fatherhood is that important. And that's the reality that we're dealing with. So what does that tell you, fellas? That tells you, you are going to have to change. It's only so much people like me or men like me can do who are, or can do for you in the law. You're going to have to change. We can end paternity tomorrow. We can end this problem tomorrow. You hear me? How will we do that? Well, the technology is there. All right? Now, let's go ahead and break this video down. Y'all hit the number one button if you can hear me. All right? I want y'all to check this video out. Hit the number one button. We'll be right back. Two guys call in. They work at DNA testing centers. One guy had to quit. One guy still works there. He told me 40% of the children are not the man's child. 40%. 40%. He said 40%. Somebody cool and Lori. it's usually Make DNA testing it's, it, and it's two, mandatory. It's two scenarios. It's where the woman, they, the person's getting a DNA test because the woman claims that is their child. Turns out it's not. The other one is where the parent is on the deathbed and makes a confession. Oh, or God. they need a health, they need a liver transplant, blood transfusion, and the blood type, there's no way that that can actually be the father. So then they find out because of medical reasons, you mean that's not my father? Then the father finds out from that way. He said it took such a toll on him that he could no longer do it because he would be sitting on the phone counseling the men and the grown children who these women falsely accuse. We see it on more, we see it on paternity court, but yet we say men need to be held accountable. All right, welcome back. So you heard that. And that's the beautiful Melanie King spitting those facts right there. Shout out to Melanie King. So so what did you guys hear at this one particular clinic? This one particular studio, there was a fella that was working there, a couple of fellas, and they said 40% of the men who are suspicious, 40% of them who are suspicious, find out that these children are not theirs. Think about that. 40% find out that the children are not theirs. Think about that, man. Imagine being that guy. Imagine being the guy who's married to a woman or has a relationship with a woman 
and find out that this baby, this woman, not only has been cheating on you, but she done went out and so irresponsible, she's gotten pregnant by another man. But she may, may not even know. My man Jay Stuller says, Uncle D, even married men need to check the DNA before signing the birth certificates because these lovely ladies ain't loyal, married, uh, 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 or not. See, here's the problem with that, brother. Here's the problem with that. The presumption is that if you're a married man, the presumption that it's your child, even if they know it's not, and we're going to talk about that. So you can't get away with it as a married man. My man, MS Delta guy, thank you for the dub. Appreciate the love. But here's the thing. And I want, to, I want you guys to understand this, okay? So basically what the young woman said, <clears throat> and I'm going to put this screen up so we can reference who I'm talking about. Y'all with me? Y'all bored? I'm not talking too fast tonight. I'm trying to save my voice here. Uncle D been yelling a lot lately. I've been on the warpath. Things have uh, had me upset out here in these YouTube streets. But uh, nevertheless, shout out to my man, Maurice Harris. Uncle D, shout out to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And man, let me just take the opportunity. So I thank all you guys, man. I, uh, you, you, before, you know, let me just appoint a personal privilege. You yeah, man, you folks, you brothers, man, y'all keep me motivated. You know, I, you know, I, I, I love you guys, you know, and, um, you know, I'm a hard man. I know I'm mean, but at the end of the day, uh, I know what it's like to be a young man, especially even an older man who feels like, you can't depend on anybody. You don't have anybody you can depend on. You know, if if, if you can't pay your bills, you're just going to be in the dark. Um, you know that if, if you get put out, you're going to be homeless. There's no shelters for you to go to. I know that. I know what it's like to be a modern man living in America. It doesn't really matter what color you are, actually. Most of us don't have anybody we can rely on. So, you know, I, I try to be that uncle. I try to be that big brother. I try to be that little brother you know, that you can depend on to speak to you on a regular basis and give you good moral upstanding advice, advice that'll help you be uh, better men, advice that also help you protect yourself from this world, this society we live in that doesn't respect men, but just wants to use us like utilities. And so, uh, you know, you guys keep me motivated. You guys, you know, and I know I sound harsh sometimes, and I know there's a lot of ladies who come by my page and they give me a hard time, but they just got to understand, you know, this is men talking to men, trying to get you guys to be, to man up and be the best men you can be and also to protect yourselves. And until you can protect yourselves, I'm here to try to help you protect yourselves or at least show you how to protect yourselves using logic and reason and stats and, uh, you know, and respect and, and also uh, sprinkle with a little love there because I love you fellas and I want to see you do better. And a lot of that comes from the fact that I have sons and I hope that in the future, other men will, will, um, you know, impart them with their wisdom, especially if it's moral and upstanding wisdom. So that, that being the case, shout out to all the subscribers, shout out to all you fellas. I appreciate y'all. But uh, let's go ahead and proceed. Uh, my man, Angel Gibbs says an accountability dating app family, and public connected. Only way you can join the group is if you're invited by a parent specific, uh, uh, especially giving father's ability to judge as well as mothers, their daughters and laws. Okay, cool, cool. Who else we got up in here? Uh, John the Baptist, $20 super sticker. Thank you so much. I right, appreciate it. So, so, so here's the thing. Basically what you heard uh, good sister Melanie King say was that 40%, okay, of the men who were suspicious, right, 40% of them learned that their suspicions were right because, um, and it's not saying 40% of all kids born, it's saying 40% um, or 40% or of all pregnancies. That's not what it's saying. It's saying the people who were suspicious, okay, 40% of them learn what? You ain't the baby daddy. And 40% is a large chunk. It's a big, that's a lot of group. That's a big people. That's a lot. Damn near half. 
And here's the thing you got to understand. As, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because, as you guys saw, the national statistics are 30% as of 1999. But here we are almost a quarter of a century later. And now they're saying 40%, and that's probably accurate. It, it probably has increased. Look at what was going on in 1999, and look at what's going on in 2023. We have a thought culture now. We have a horror culture. And because we have a horror culture, promiscuity is on the rise. It's more likely that these women, these women have no shame. We got a different group of women. And so I would believe that if, if, if this clinic is saying 40%, then more likely than not, is over 40%. It's probably closer to 50%, maybe 60. Because remember, there are some men that don't suspect their woman. And the only reason they don't suspect is because either they're not looking or this woman is a better liar than those other women. So it's probably a lot higher, fellas. It's only 40% because these guys suspected and got tested. Think about all the fellas who aren't tested. Hear what else she said. Some of guys, some of these men went there with their grown children for medical reasons. And they took some medical tests, like DNA tests. They tested for bone marrow. Maybe a child needed bone marrow from his brother or sister. And then come to find out these two children have two different fathers. They can't even donate bone marrow to each other because they got different DNA structures. Think about that. You go to the hospital. You go to the hospital. Your kid needs a blood transfusion and you can't give it to him because you're not the father. Your kid needs a kidney and you can't give it to him because you're not the father. Or your two sons, or your three children, boy, girl, whatever, daughter, son, two daughters, two sons, whatever. One of them ain't related, or two of them not related. Or two of them got two different daddies from yours. Or all of them got three different daddies. And you ain't the one, and you married to this woman. Imagine how you feel, man. It's extremely disheartening, and it's sad, especially at a time like that when you're facing a critical illness. My man Angel Gibbs says this, he says, because traditionally fathers shame their sons into manhood, while mothers and their, uh, and their besties indoctrinate the girls into their indictment. Yeah, they do. Teach them how to be sneaky and shady. Let me tell you another way. Number one, the man is suspicious. They get the DNA test. Number two, medical reasons, they get the DNA test. What's the third reason? Come on, what, what, what happens? What happens to these greedy broads? Y'all know, come on, talk to me. What happens? Huh? They want more money, right? She want more money. She want an increase in child support. Or she want to put you on child support officially. And so what does she do? She files those papers. Y'all know it. Y'all seen it happen before. My man Robert Platter says, so if 40% of these kids potentially are not by the men who might be the father, then whose fault is single motherhood really? Something to think about. Something to think about. On top of that, 55.48% of black men don't even have kids. So, that group of men who do have children, that 44% uh, percent of men that do have children, maybe 25, 30, maybe 40% of y'all ain't even the real daddy. What does that say? Somewhere between 30 and 40% of y'all might not even be the real daddy. Think about that, fellas. 
That's something the medium man needs to figure out. Where my medium man? Shout out. Y'all type medium man in the chat room. We, <laughs> them numbers is too. Hey, he needs to crunch those numbers. If 44% of black men have children, but the DNA tests reveal that anywhere from 30 to 40% of men who think their fathers aren't the fathers, what does that say? It says that there's only a small percentage of men in this country who are fathers. Damn. Y'all type medium man in the chat room. Maybe he'll hear it. We need to get a, like a bat signal or something uh, and, and put that up. Y'all somebody clip this and send it to him. Say, Uncle D got a question. <laughs> anyway, they want more money. But along with getting more money, or really here's some, some guys y'all pay under the table. You don't want to be involved in the child support system. So you pay under the table. So you've been paying this woman under the table for years, right? Probably giving her more money than she would be getting from child support officially based on your income. And then what does she do? She decides she wants to put you on child support uh, through the state in hopes of getting a, a more money. Really what she's doing, she's want, she wants to have control over you, okay? She wants to have control over you and to get more money. But lo and behold, what they don't realize is when you go down to that courthouse, you got to follow them courthouse rules. You understand? And what's the first thing you have to do when you go to the courthouse? If you're not married to this woman, there's going to be a DNA test order. They're going to make you take a DNA test. And what happens if this man finds out he's not the child? He's not the child's father. He's going to cut off and she's not going to get any money. Hell, and even and sometimes even if she is, uh, it is his child. The judge might not order him to pay as much money as he's been paying. And so those are the three ways people normally find out. See, the worst part of this situation is this: even the man may not, even though the man may not suspect that the child is not his. Women know most of the time whether or not they should question who the father is. They just don't care. Let me say that again. Women know whether or not they should question whether or not who the father is. They know if they've had sex with more than one man in the past 90 days. They know that. They know. They know if they've had sex with a man more than one man be before their last period. They know. And they may not know which one of those men is the father, but they know they should question who the father is. It's not like she has DNA telepathy. <clears throat> she don't know who the father is but she know that she should question who the father is. That's what I'm saying. Now, if women were <clears throat> honest, and they were honest that they've been cheating or that they have allowed multiple men to have unprotected sex with them, then it'd be a lot easier to figure it out. <clears throat> women justify not telling men that they cheated because they say <clears throat> men don't have to tell women when they cheated. But yeah, ain't no pregnancies involved. We're not getting pregnant. There's no financial obligation. There's a difference. It's a big difference. <clears throat> That's why men and women are different. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I never believed that, that a woman, you know, uh, you know, I never believe that she doesn't know that she should be questioned. You see, I, I never believe she doesn't know there, that there isn't a question. And one thing for you fellas is recognize, and I'm trying to harden you up. I'm trying to give you some tests, fellas, I'm trying to help you understand the mindset you should have. Understand, 
that if she questions who the father is, you definitely should question who the father is. Don't let your heart take control of that situation and the young you write a check that the old you is gonna have to cash. And if any woman has the smallest issue with mandatory DNA testing, I don't care if it's the first date or the 15th date, you need to keep your distance from that woman. Cause that's a clear indication that she lacks empathy, ethics, and principles. Imagine being one of those 40% of men who find out too late. And a lot of these women just don't care what men have to endure. And those women are broken, they're confused, they have no empathy. And it's impossible for them to love themselves. But here's the thing, family. This is the times that we live in. <clears throat> and these modern women, they can't stop being the lying whores who intentionally lie to destroy men's lives that they've been programmed to be. You got male victims who are forced, obligated, and coerced into paying child support for someone else's child in order to help take care of some lazy, evil, lying, cheating, modern woman. You would think that women would know, but the reason they do it is because most likely they don't care about the kid or the damage that their actions will cause to the child and the non-father and the father's family and their family. They don't care. These women only care about themselves and what they can get and what they benefit from in the short term. They will intentionally destroy this child's life because we never talk about the effect that growing up and then realizing that your mother lied to you about who your father was. We never talk about that. But you destroy this child's life. because of your fraud, because you want support and financial gains. You destroy that man's life. That child grows up not knowing who their father's, their real father's grandmother was, mother was, not hearing the stories about how his father's family, what his daddy was like as a child. Young boys especially base who they are based on the stories they hear about their fathers. And you mixing and matching men that don't belong together. That man that you say is the father is not the biological father of that child. They don't look alike, they don't smell alike, they don't have the same walk, they don't talk the same. They're kids, they hold their hands and they sit the same way their daddies do. And you don't have that. This is what you're doing to those child. And those boys will grow up and hate those mothers. And that's not healthy either. A lot of that is why black men have so many mom issues or mother issues in the black community right now. Because those rotten raggedy broads lied to them about something as fundamental as who their daddy is. You rotten broads got one goddamn job. And that's the match the baby with the proper baby daddy. And you failed at that. That is not good for the most educated group of women in America, so you say. Maurice Harris says, accept these women for who they are and move on. You can't move on because this whore mentality has taken control of most women in American society. These are the same women that treat, preach they strong, independent, don't need a man. Right? But in reality, they don't need a man except for to steal his money and child support and have him paying for someone else's child so they can get back in the club and get ran through multiple times by multiple different dudes and get pregnant again. Let me tell you something. I want you young men to listen to me. You men who haven't had children. 
a large percentage of women have this whore mentality. I'm going to say a number as large as 90% of this most recent generation is exactly like this. They don't see you as valuable. They don't see manhood or fatherhood as valuable. They can do it without you, except your money. That's what you're looking at. That's why you got these young men saying, I'm going overseas. Because I want to be around a, a, a class of women who don't have that whore mentality. And when I say whore, I'm talking about straight out the Bible. I'm talking about Jezebel. I'm talking about the whore of Babylon. So this is a religious broadcast at this point. When I say the term whore, <clears throat> that's a biblical term. If you're offended by the term whore, God damn it, that means you don't like Jesus. Praise God. 90% of today's women are just like that. So take your time, bro. Make sure you got your money together before you do anything because you may have to fight a battle in court. And then more importantly, you got to vet these women hard. Make sure you're on the same page with them. There's some trifling women out there. And no matter what she says, fella, strap up. Because they're out for a check. Now, the thing I want to talk to you guys about is this. It's a psychosis going on. All right? You get that big old uh, sign out the way. Amen. Somebody said that. Somebody, matter of fact, we need to bring the blood of Jesus up in here because I, I need to pray for you, man. <laughs> matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and open the chat room up and allow you fellas to start coming in. Uh, let's go on ahead and, and pray for y'all right now. Because, see, you fellas are the problem. I don't mean the problem in that you're, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're the ones, the source of fraternity fraud. I mean that you guys could do something about it, but you don't. And so we need to talk about that. Okay. And the link is in the chat room, but I got a few more things to say and I'm gonna let you fellas in. All right. But we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna come right back. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. We'll be right under back. The blood, under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me heart break up, put the blood on me face just like a makeup. Under the blood. Under the blood. Jesus cover me. Jesus, you can cover me. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. The link is in the chat room. So, fellas, here's the thing. <clears throat> you have at your availability prenatal DNA, postnatal DNA. You don't have to child sign that. Uh, you don't have to sign that um, birth certificate. Okay? You can go to CVS or Walgreens and get DNA tests. Right, it's like $100. So my question is, why do we even still have an issue with DNA fraud if it's preventable? Why do we have an issue, fellas? If men wanted to stop DNA fraud, we could do it right in paternity fraud, we could do it now. But why not? Let me tell you why. Because a lot of you men choose not to know. Don't you? Tell the truth. You know guys like that. Men choose not to know. Some of y'all got kids now. And you looking at that child all upside the head like that. <laughs> you be grabbing his head like that, looking at him. From this side to that side, you don't even know. You're not 100% that that child is yours. I'm telling the truth, ain't 
My man Andrew Griggs said, faith over conviction. I'm telling you the truth. That boy don't walk like you. He got a different grade of hair than you, the nose shaped different. He don't act like you. <clears throat> you love him, of course, because he's a child. It's easy to love a child. He don't talk like you. Your big mama and grandmama and all of them say that he don't look like us. You hear the whispers. But you just took your baby mama word for it or your wife's word for it. And that's exactly how these same guys we've been discussing this whole time end up in the spot they in. They happy not knowing. I'm telling, and I tell you the truth. Blood or no blood, they raise these kids. And they feel as though they're the children's father, even though it's just might not be true. And nothing's going to change their minds about that. Nothing. And women count on that. These women, these predatory women, they count on that. And you fellas are the weakest link. Because other women will use the example of that sucker to make men who do want to know for sure feel bad. They'll throw it up in the face. You hear it all the time. You tell them about DNA fraud. What do they tell you? My granddaddy. He raised my, my grandmama's children, even though they were, we just found out that, that a couple of our aunties wasn't even our aunties. And it's the same people that turn around and tell you, but granddaddy had children all across town. He probably was messing around because your, your rotten ass grandma was messing around. That's what they was doing in that relationship. That's why I tell y'all, start a grown folk business. You don't know what the hell was going on. Grandma got bastard kids from the milkman. And you talking crazy about grand granddaddy got his side chick up the street. Obviously, they both was doing it. Give some of that heat to your grandma. Some of y'all don't want to admit your grandmammy was a hoe. It's just true. <laughs> She was a whole whole eye. Your grandma was for the streets. Or your grandma was for the cobblestones. <laughs> grandma was for the cobblestones. <laughs> they got they had grandma tied up out there with the horses. The horses, as they say. See, here's the thing. I understand that. I understand why some men just don't want to know. But people need to be held accountable. And the truth needs to be brought to light. Another will ever change. People's hearts and lives will continue to be broken if we don't do something about it. Everybody deserves the truth. Somebody said, Grandma and Deacon Willie. Yeah, you wonder why Deacon Willie always coming to your grandma's house after the goddamn church service is over. And y'all got to go outside. She say, close my screen door. And they first start off playing that piano. And then next thing you know, it goes silent. And you out there playing tic-tac-toe and flippity-flopping. And you hear De Deacon, Deacon Jones coming up out there, hopping in the kind of praise God, praise God. You children, stay out of the street now. You chilling. You see it. Deacon, De Deacon done hit your grandma from the back while your daddy was at work, working a double shift on a Sunday. Shit. Y'all know them women, hey, what is, there's nothing new under the sun, Solomon said. What is and shall be. <laughs> what is, was, and shall be, praise God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shit. There's plenty of pastors out there that got straight children out there. But anyway, back to the subject again. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me?
Angel Gray said, we need the man scouts and the woman scouts. And it seemed one side at once taught how to play uh, the game of life objectively. Yeah. Fellas, let me say this again. You can always request or get a paternity test, even without going to court. And I said, I'm going to say it again. It's just as simple. It's easy. And most of you guys know it, but the reason you don't get that drugstore DNA test is a couple of reasons. Most likely, some of y'all just don't want to get involved. It ain't my baby. It ain't got nothing to do with it. The minute a woman tells you that it's her child, you, you, she pregnant, the first, and you're not married, the first thing you need to do is file a prenatal lawsuit. It's not common in every state. You can do it in California. You can do it in Texas. You can do it in Florida now, I believe. I know you can do it in Texas. and Florida, they just put a law out there. Prenatal paternity. What does that do? It establishes venue. It requires them to get a paternity test. You can't establish custody and visitation and child support until after the child is born, but it will obligate you to pay for health insurance. That should be the first thing you can do if you got money. If not, <clears throat> got it. Nevertheless, when you go take those ultrasounds, ask for a prenatal DNA test. Establish that off top if you're not married to this woman. Now you can't say you don't know because I just told you. It's the right thing to do for you and that kid. You don't want to be there holding that baby when he's born and you're not the real daddy. But most of y'all won't bring it up because you don't want to shame these women. But what's the worst she going to do? What have I told you guys? Embrace being the bad guy. What's the worst she going to do? All she can do is be pissed off, but the DNA test already came back. And she put, look, what's going to happen? I told you it was your baby, asshole. Or, damn, I didn't know. But it, it don't matter if she pissed off. If she pissed off because you find out it's not your baby, why do you care about this woman who is trying to lie to you? It's pissed off. It was trying to hook you in for 18 years. Why would you care if she's pissed off? And if she's pissed off after you find out the baby is yours, you say, oh, baby, well, you know, I'm sorry. I should have believed you anyway. And you make up to her, and you go on about and raise your kid. But either way, there's no reason you shouldn't get a prenatal DNA test if it's available to you. And after that, you go get that DNA. When that baby is born, before you sign that paperwork, you go ahead and get that in office, in hospital DNA test. A man, Angel Greer, says he attacked your reputation, destruction, as Jordan Peterson explained. Right. Now, here are my thoughts on mandatory DNA testing. Y'all have heard about that. I believe that men should be asked to do a paternity test at the hospital before signing the birth certificate. Do I believe in mandatory DNA? No. No, why? There's a play on words. I want y'all to listen because I know I just pissed off a bunch of people. My man Obi Trice said it costs way less than a vasectomy, fellas. Protect your seat. I don't believe in mandatory DNA testing, paternity testing. Why? Because I respect you men's rights not to know and not to suffer that embarrassment. I tell you guys all the time, you're free men. And if you don't want to know, you don't have to know. And so I don't want to force upon you a mandatory DNA test that might give you some results that you don't want to hear. You're free men. Do I believe that a man should be asked? Should it be mandatory that a man is asked if he wants a paternity test, both in writing and verbally? Yes, I believe in that. And at those cases, I, I believe it should be routine. I believe testing should be routine if requested or if, 
of once upon once you're asked, you you desire. Yeah, I believe that. And here's the thing, despite what the feminists say, I think that if a man has questions in his mind and he's allowed to get a DNA test and that, de and that test comes back affirmative that he is the father, he's not excluded as the father, it's gonna make him bond with that child more. On top of that, it's gonna save other men from financial obligations and emotional damage associated with being fooled like that. And also, it's going to preserve men's, uh, hopefully, help rehabilitate men's view of modern women. Because right now, y'all don't really think too much of women, do you? Y'all don't really think too much of these modern women. Y'all think they're a bunch of hoes. Y'all think they, they can't cook, they can't clean. They're only good for twerking and, and, and having sex with. And you don't believe nothing they say for the most part. And so we need to be able to restore men's faith in women because otherwise they're not going to want to marry them. The, what, what do we used to call women? Our better half. You don't hear men call women their better half anymore. You say these hoes. Because that's what they've proven themselves to be, a bunch of whores. And in order to help restore men and men's view of women to make women worthy again, that should be a hat, make, make women great again, make women worthy again. We got to change the law. So we don't have so much proof of their whorish behavior, or it can be averted, or suffered, or suffering the consequences of their whorish behavior. Men can avoid that. Now, what is mandatory? Let me tell you what's mandatory. In some states, as long as you're married to the woman, even if she cheats on you. Even if she tells the courthouse and the judge, shout out to my man, Mid J Commander. Thank you so much. Shout out to Freedom MMC. These hoes lie to themselves and each other first. Then they become angry at us for daring to challenge her truth. Praise Moses. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Fellas, I want you to hear me on something. Even if she cheats, she tells the court, this is not his child. This is not my husband's child. If she shows up to court with the man who got her pregnant, the judge still is going to say that that child is the father's child and he's responsible for that child under state law. There's nothing the court can do about it. My man, Mark Swift. Salute to you and your family. Great topic. Men need to hold women accountable and protect your seed and wallet. The court is going to assume that the husband is the child's father, even against the will of the mother. Despite the fact that the father, the biological father could be present. Even if the woman is separated from the husband. If the and gets pregnant while separated, if the conception occurred prior to the finalization of the divorce, his presumption is going to be that that child belongs to that father. Now, unless you live in a state like Louisiana which has something called a relation back clause. The divorce is finalized from the date it was filed. That's, that's over there. That ain't everywhere. Might be the only state, because you know Louisiana got them funny laws. But anyway, that's the quagmire that married men. You shit out of luck. 
Marriage definitely shouldn't automatically assign a man the responsibility of a child. Especially if the mother is sitting there saying, we have evidence and proof that this is not the biological uh, uh, father. And the ex knows and doesn't want to participate in this child's life. But see, here's the policy you got to understand. I want you guys to understand how cold-blooded these women are. What would happen if married men had to prove that the children were theirs? What would happen, fellas? What would happen? Some of you guys who've had children outside of wedlock, I've had that experience. Because, see, it's a double-edged sword. I want you to listen to me. My man, Takiyah's Flower, says, my mom told me and my sister that we don't have the same dad. I told my dad, and my mom still hasn't apologized. Damn, my mom works for the state now. I think she'll process CS payments the rest of her life. Damn. Let me explain something. I want you guys to listen to me. If you have a child outside of wedlock with a woman, you have no rights. You got to file paperwork to get your rights. If a child is born and you married to the woman, the presumption is that child. Why? Because it gives you control over that child. She can't just run off somewhere. If each man had to prove that every child born to his wife while he was married was his, you'll start off just like these dudes who didn't get married. The whole point of the paternity, the whole point of the patriarchy, the patriarch is the one that controls the family, and you control the family through the children. So we don't want that. We do want the presumption that the child born in the marriage is the father. I know it stinks. But the alternative is worse than what we're dealing with right now. The alternative is women will then take control, total control, and you might not see your kids. You got to run the court and prove it's yours. Even though you signed the paperwork, you have no control of your children. A lot of these men who have children outside of wedlock, they know exactly what I'm talking about. They got to pay child support, but they don't have visitation. And the courts will tell you, well, those are two different things. You got to file to establish paternity. You did that. Now you're paying child support. Now you got to file to establish uh, uh, um, visitation. And so you got a child out there you never see. We don't want married men to have that. That's too much distraction. So just think about that. But what I'm talking about is this. For you men who suspect that a child is not yours, you definitely need to get a DNA test. Okay? Definitely. You definitely need to get a DNA test. If you got a woman who doesn't want a DNA test, you definitely need to get a DNA test. You got prenatal DNA test. You got postnatal DNA test. There's no excuse. You got mandatory ordered prenatal tests that you can get the court to do if you file a, a prenatal lawsuit. And you can go take that and, and, and you can and, and postnatal to establish custody and child support. On top of that, you can get hold of that baby, swab his mouth, and get a test from CVS just so you'll know. We've got to end paternity fraud. We can do it, man. We can do it. And for you guys out there who just don't want to know, I respect your right. It does not make you more of a man because you're willing to take care of somebody else's child, though. So stop trying to shame those men who aren't. That's the other thing. That's your choice. And you have the right to do that. But you don't get any points from me from that. It's just like those guys who married right out of high school. You don't get any points for being married to your wife for 30 years. What that tells me is that you as a man didn't think you would have any better options coming down the road. And you were at your highest point. So you got the best woman you could get and you work with it. So instead of working yourself up and becoming the best man you can be, and then finding you a high status woman with the best genes you could find, the most fertile 
after you reached your apex as a man, you just said settle for the first thing coming. It lets me, it makes, it's like living in the same house your whole life. You didn't want to bet on yourself. You don't get any credit from me for that. I know a lot of people will say that, oh, he stayed with the same woman from high school. That's great. I don't see it like that. I see it as though you didn't believe in yourself. It's like staying at the same job for your whole life. I don't give you any credit for that. And I don't give men credit for taking care of children that aren't theirs. I'm not going to call you foolish. I'm not going to call you stupid. That's you. That's your life. But in reverse, I don't want you calling these other men selfish for not wanting to take care of some bastard kids that aren't theirs, especially when they know or suspect they're not. Shout out to my man, Brother Marcus, SVM, SYSBM. He said the courts will uh, implement in local parentis if you sign them papers and those children are not yours. Yeah, you took on a parental role. And I know this is some difficult talk, fellas. But again, I tell you guys the same thing I would tell my children, my own sons. And if my sons came to me with something like this, I'm going to say, son, you got to give you even suspect that woman uh um has cheated on you or has had a child is not yours, you gotta definitely get a DNA test. And if you had a child out of wedlock, you should get a DNA test. Period. Matter of fact, I'm not putting the child in the will until you get a DNA test. <laughs> you can put some pressure on them like that. Men and fathers need to learn sign language using shame and souls, guilt and the need to be right against mothers and their daughters to be stoic and be stern. Yeah, man. In other words, stop being so goddamn nice. Well, fellas, it's time to do what we do. Praise God. I'll be praying behind the scenes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to be here too much longer. Hey, look, fellas, this has just been for your own edification. I know it sounds harsh, but if you had men in your life that truly loved you and appreciated you, hopefully they will tell you these things. But if they haven't, now you can't say you haven't heard. I'm telling you now, protect yourselves. If you take nothing else, take this from me. Generally speaking, in life, you don't want your young self to cause conditions to arise that your older self will have to suffer through. You understand what I'm saying? That's it. And one of those things that young men do is they operate on emotion. And you could do something at 20 or 30 that your 40 or 50 or 60 year old self would have to suffer from. Hell, your teenage self could do something. It's men right now who are in trouble as teenagers. And they still can't get a job at 40 and 50 years old. So I'm just asking you to protect, protect your future self. Just like we always talk about that inner child. We always want to protect that inner child as older people. Well, I need you young men to protect 
that older man that you'll be, that one who wants to have peace in his life, who wants to sit and enjoy his money, enjoy his hard work, and not being robbed. It's a man that's 70 years old is still paying arrearages for a child that's 45 year old. I know that story. A child that wasn't even his. So just think about that, fellas. But either way, not going to be here too long. I know we got a couple of guys here. I'm going to let these fellas come on in. And we'll chop it up for a minute. Uh, Alvin, what do you think about this conversation, bro? Well, salute to you, Uncle D, and, and the chat and, and the panel. Um, it, I mean, it's a harsh reality. And, uh, you know, I feel like I've been fortunate enough to be able to avoid any problems thus far. But it, what right. it does is it, it has slowed my my desire for companionship way down. Mm. That's for sure. Because, you know, at this age, I'm like, all right, well, I can't afford a slip up, you right. know, and I can't afford to be reckless. So, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more careful about who I even engage with, um, let alone, you know, shooting up the club. So, I mean, all she needs is your name and address. That's it. And, and brother, I've, we, you know, with this, you know, endeavor that I've, you know, been on this journey that I've been on for these past year or so, you know, I have met a lot of men that found out very recently that their situation wasn't what it, what they thought it was. And, <clears throat> and, and it hurts my heart. It, it really mm -hmm. messes me up a little bit because, you know, my, my, the, 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 the desire to know who your father is and to have some sort of legacy and yeah. to, th those are important to men. Those are, those things are important to men. And I'm realizing how uh, much those kinds of things have been just kind of brushed aside and, mm -hmm. and, um, and we're not allowed to have those kind of wants or needs. It's completely ignored, right? They focus so much. So on, Oh, you just want a piece of ass and da, 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 da. but it's like, no, nah, man, I want a family. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would like a family and a child that is my own that looks like yeah. me. And and um it's been robbed from us. But uh, uh yeah. thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. And oh. and I'm gonna do my part to also keep this conversation going because I think um you kind of hit on something. There's a lot of men out there that just don't want to know and don't want to uh, know. Yeah. They don't want to know. They don't want their hearts to be broken. The woman is the love of their life, they feel like they can't do any better. They don't want their life to change. They'd rather just pay the money. I get it, guys. I understand. I get it. But don't shame these men who do want to know because it's your right to know. And let me tell you something else. You may not want to know. But what about that child that's eventually going to find out? Because, see, it's too much Ancestor.com, DNA tests, uh, medical decisions that, that need to be that, that, that are going to require knowing your DNA, uh, eventually they're going to find out. Eventually the truth is going to find out. It may take years, but they're eventually going to find out. And that child is going to feel cheated. I know I'm one of those children. For those of you guys who read my book, I didn't find my real father to 10 years ago after I took a DNA test. Let that marinate on y'all for a minute. Think about that. I'm a grown ass man with kids myself. And I didn't find out who my real father was until after I had two kids. So now as a grown man, I got to sit back and look at old people die who are my aunties, who are alive when I was young, who I have no relationship with. I got to hear stories about my grandmothers and my grandfathers and my cousins that are no longer here and around. I got to hear these stories. So not only did that decision those adults made when I was a child affect them, but it, what about the child? So you don't, Think about that. See, there's a reason why a lot of us are here in the manosphere, or huh, I'm not part of the manosphere anymore, of course. <laughs> but there's a reason why a lot of men are here on YouTube, and we still we speak on these 
male oriented topics because we're hurting. And let me tell you something. The reason why a lot, I'm not your leader, but the reason why a lot of you guys listen to me and the reason why people like me are so popular amongst you is because I'm broken too. The only difference between me and you is I've learned to heal myself. And that's why I can speak to you about your brokenness. Imagine growing up. And there's always hints. There's always hints. You hear the stories. But you don't want to believe them as a child. Imagine what it does to a child. He don't look like you. Damn, you 6'5". Your daddy only 5'10". Damn. Imagine being that child. What does it do? It's going to make you angry. It's going to make you distrustful of the people you're supposed to be closest to. And it's going to force divisions and bonding. I'm just saying. There's a reason why a lot of black men are not close to their mothers. Myself included. It has a lot to do with the fact that you've been lied to. And it takes a lot. It's embarrassing, especially when you find out, you know, that last name that you received that you got ain't even the last name of your biological father. So you've been living a lie. That's going to do a couple things to you. What it did for me is made me get a lot closer to the most high. I had to. I had to. Because otherwise, I would feel as though my parents had betrayed me. And what would that have done to me? So it, it forced me to totally disavow my earthly parents and focus on my most high father in heaven. And that's the only parent that I count on at this point in my life. The, parent I, the only parents I'm concerned about at this point is my father in heaven and the father I am to these three sons that I have. But let me tell you something else personal story. My third son has been taken from me. Baby mama ran off to another country. I've been in a custody battle for eight years with her. Last year, I spent $20,000 in this custody battle. This year, my lawyer, and it, what is this, March, sent me another bill for $11,000. I fight for my children. Because I want them to know that their daddy fought for them and that father loves them. And I'm glad I'm in a position to be able to do that. But see, fellas, I'm just like y'all. When I speak to black men, when I speak to all men, I'm not speaking down to you. I'm speaking as one who is amongst you. I know your pain. I know what you're dealing with. Yeah, I'm a lawyer. You know, I'm, you know I, I got all this earthly success, but nothing tears upon your heart like your heritage, like your children, and all that you missed out on. You got cousins you don't even know. We cousins, okay. You have no bond with them because you just met them 10 years ago as, a, as an adult. Even my biological father, wonderful man. We definitely not as close as we could be. Why? I just met the man. See, a lot of you women and you men who decide to look the other way, you never consider that child. So tonight, you guys who are playing stepdaddy and you know you ain't that child's daddy and you helping that woman keep that child away from her father. Put yourself in that child's place in 30 years. How are they going to look at you? He or she is going to hold all of y'all responsible for what you did. And I want you to understand that. You are going to pay for that. That child is going to grow up and they're going to hold you accountable for what you did or did not do. You're not going to get away with it. Anyway, thank you so much, Alvin. Let's go to uh, my man, Sigma Black Ronan. But first, let me read this. The guy in the black suit, my mother finally revealed my father's location. When I went to his location, he died a month prior. Yeah, she knew. Let me tell you something, brother. She knew he died a month prior because she had been keeping up with him and his people. And the reason she told you 
a month after he died is because she never wanted you to meet him and talk to him and hear his side of the story. Because I guarantee you everything she had been saying about your father was a lie. And until you actually hear from your father, which she never wanted you to do, you wouldn't know the truth about her. He said, but needless to say, my relationship with my mother has been strained for some time now, as it should be, guy with the black suit. As it should be. A man, Angel Griggs says, we are here because it's the place we can regain honor through civil discourse, holding ourselves to a man's standard while women want us disconnected where they can artificially create a uh, perspective. Right. That's true too. You see, as long the most dangerous thing for society is when men start talking to each other, because that's what change happens, especially men who have ideas and who are strong enough to put those ideas in play. The reason I get so much shaming, the reason that these women refer to me as dangerous is not because of my intelligence or education It's because of my courage. It's because of my courage and men follow courage. See, courage is the key to masculinity. And it takes a lot of courage to come out here and talk to you guys on a daily basis, influencing the nation. And I am, even with only 60,000 subscribers, I definitely am, because people are talking. But it's courage. And that's what makes me dangerous. I want you also to be dangerous. I want you men to show courage. And when all of us start, all of all righteous men, morally upright men, begin to so, show courage, that's when the world begins to change. Uh, big man, 7917, playing stepdaddy Captain Save a Ho is like playing story mode of another nigga, uh, N-word, save game on the hard level, book of simps, 187. Thank you so much. And for you men out there, um, you guys out there, you guys playing stepdaddy, you know you only doing that because you want to be with that woman and you want to keep her happy. Them kids know you're not there for her, for them. They know you're there for that woman. You say you are, but you wouldn't take care of them kids by themselves if that woman wasn't around. And when those kids grow up and they, they develop a, a grown-up perspective, they're going to weigh you too, even though you think you're doing a good job. Why you think stepdaddy is such a horrible job to have? Why you think they leave you? Because they, they recognize that you were just a simp and you were disingenuous. There's no win in that for you, fellas. Send those women back to their baby daddy. Do that. You're not doing them any favors. I got some guys on my, and I know I'm preaching, and I'm going to get to my man Sigma Black Ronan in a minute. I know I'm preaching. It's some guys on my page right now that say, I know they're not my kids, but I take care of them anyway. They're not your kids. They know they're not your kids. You know they're not your kids. It's a fiction. They're going to want to know who their real grandma is and their real grandpa and their real cousins. They want to know who their real daddy is. But even beyond the daddy, they want to know who their real family is, where they came from. Your family's from Ireland. Their biological family's from Poland. That's two different cultures. The man that I'm named after is from North Carolina. The man who fathered me is from the Caribbean. No motherfucking wonder I like going hanging out in the Caribbean and dancing and, and partying. No wonder when I got there, it's like, damn, this shit feel like home. I fucked around and made a baby down there because it felt like home. You know what I'm saying? Sperm was just flying every motherfucking way when I got there. I felt like I was at home. Why is that? Because my daddy, my real daddy, <laughs> fuck the last name, that's where my people are from. You understand me? Let me know. I don't want to lose my goddamn voice again. Shit, hold on. Florida man said, these hoes, BMTs, don't love their children. They just deal with them. Also, being a stepdaddy at times feel like you're selling your soul. Sigma Black Ronan, my Haitiano friend. I'm a motherfucking West Indian nigga. Didn't even know. 
That's why I like going down there drinking that rum and dancing with them loose ass women like that, man. You look, you actually look like my uncle Shaw Boogie. Yeah, it's in my blood. He black as hell. That's funny. My mama light skin from mm-hmm. Mississippi. He black as you. Mm-hmm. You understand? Right. And and kids deserve to know who their real parents are. Absolutely. I mean, even if he ain't shit, it's still they ain't shit daddy. You women are not, you women and men who decide to take these children for, that's not your job. That's not your job to determine what's in the best interest of another man's child without his knowledge. And he ain't did nothing. He hadn't even had an opportunity to make a decision. But anyway, bro, go ahead. Let's chop it up. Talk to me, baby. What you got to say? You know, um, I have a similar situation with uh, older kin elders. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't, I won't drop any names out of respect, but, uh, I always wondered why they didn't look like their father, why mm. him and his sister didn't look like their father. And, um, because he's dark skin, they're light skin and their mother's only between like she's like medium chocolate. Mm-hmm. So I was always like, kind of, you know, that's the first time. Like I was like, maybe, maybe I know we have fair skin people in the, somewhere down the, the bloodline. That's but, what they say. That's what they say. Go ahead. Well, I see pictures. I see pictures. But um, it didn't make any sense until one day, uh, my other kin folks saw a man, older man, come around, mm. and he looked exactly like him. In his, if 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 this, if my one of my elders was in his seventies. He looked exactly like him in the face. And it said, oh, he was friends with so-and-so since they were kids. Yeah. And so now, so now, it, le- it, le- it left the, even as a spectator, it leaves a sour taste in my mouth, especially when people try to elevate that side of my family. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Don't, don't, don't. don't you know what they'll do? They'll say, well, you have a daddy. Wasn't, wasn't Mr. Jim good to you? He was good. Too. He was a good daddy too. Bitch, that ain't my motherfucking real daddy, bitch. You see what I mean? But you can't say that to your mother, your grand. You can't say that. That's what you think. But it makes you not want to be around them people, man. Like you, yeah. there's no excuse for a family. Uh, and, you, and you know what's, you know what's, it's, it's so, com- it, it, it's, I'm starting to get stories that's so common now that, that I found out Usher Raymond, father is Haitian. And he didn't meet him until 16. <laughs> Like I said, I found out, I'm thinking I'm one of these real American niggas. Come to find out I'm one of them foreign niggas. Like, damn, nigga, you, you one of them niggas too? <laughs> you, you want, hold on. Look, 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 I just thought I was a red nigga with, you know, like, damn, nigga, you one of them niggas too, man? I'm looking at, my, I'm look, I'm looking at myself in the mirror like, damn, well, you know, this is kind of big. The motherfucker, nigga. Look, they say you look like a Mexican. Oh, no, nigga, you a West Indian nigga. Damn, what kind of Indian is that? <laughs> Funny as shit. This is, man, this all this happened to me, man, in 2012. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, I'm walking around telling people, I'm a motherfucking West Indian nigga. Wow. Damn, I thought my daddy was from North Carolina and my mama from Mississippi. That's easy to explain. You see what I'm saying? But then you got your mama from Mississippi, your daddy from motherfucking Trinidad. How did them niggas meet? God damn, where where did they meet? Was she on like a holiday? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But then having been raised Girl's trip. American, and you know, we are xenophobic. I just want y'all to know black Americans are some of the most racist black people on the planet to other black people. And like being raised around that, you know, them niggas coming over here to take our job. Damn, I'm one of them niggas too. <laughs> I, lived in, I, lived, I lived in New York in the 90s. I, I seen it. Yeah. I seen yeah. it. I lived in New York in the yeah. 90s. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. like, damn, I had to I had to totally flip the script and see, like, damn, no. And then they seemed pretty cool, you know? Because, see, here's the funny thing. So my black ass was raised around a bunch of foreigners. That's why I call it a bunch of foreigners out here. Because <laughs> my fake daddy, you know, he had a little wife from the islands, too. You see what I mean? And so I'm around all these people from Trinidad. Like, I ain't eat no motherfucking roti. What the fuck is that? Roti, I like cornbread. Then I ate that shit. I'm like, this is actually pretty motherfucking good. What is it? is <laughs> good. God damn, Roti's this is that. It's like a burrito with, <laughs> like, I don't want the one with the goat, but I take the one with the chicken. All niggas like chicken. 
stuff they eat. <laughs> this is delicious. They fold yeah. it up like a little square taco. Like, my yeah. God, what's this little powdery stuff on it? And then they got their own special little soda pops and shit. I'm like, damn, this is tiny. I'm six or seven years you ever, old. You ever, you ever had cola? You ever I, don't, I don't know all the names, man. I'm sitting there at their little parties. Motherfuckers will not sleep. I just want y'all to understand yeah. that. So these are the people. I'm yeah. sitting here with the perspective that my daddy is from North Carolina and my mom is from Mississippi. And my and my daddy has married this foreign woman from the islands and they doing all this foreign island shit. They don't go to sleep. The parties last to three o'clock in the morning. You got babies walking around with diapers on and no shirts at 2.30. You understand what I'm saying? The kitchen is hot as a motherfucker. It's people, you don't know what the fuck they saying. They dancing nasty. You see what I mean? And you just looking at this. You in there playing Atari like, that motherfucker's still out there. This is some wild shit. And then the rum gets to flowing. Having a great time. Bing -a -ling -a -ling. Cool. All that old school <laughs> sponsor shit. I'm like, damn. I mean, this how these niggas, these some wild niggas, man. And I grow up around that, but I'm like, these foreigners, this ain't my shit, though, man. You know, I'm in the earth, wind, and fire. I'm used to my mama waking up on Saturday morning, playing some earth, wind, and fire, some rude. I don't hear, you know, I'm like, but these foreign niggas, these niggas, oh, I like this roti shit. When can I get some more of that? And roti is the hardest shit that you can get. It's only cooked like once a year or at a party. That's the only time. Mm. And the lady that make it is the only one to know how to make it. And she need all this special shit to yeah. make it. And then you got to pay her for it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> she want like $10 or $5 for each one. Like, damn, you cooking in your house and I got to pay you for food that you could. This is the shit I'm growing up. So imagine me, all that pushback as a little boy, I'm giving this these foreigners, yeah. right? These I ain't like them. We did. I'm a black American, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Oh, you know, all these foreigners. They ain't me. They ain't me. Then yeah. come to find out in 2010, nigga, you one of them. Damn. Like, wow. Shit. I wish y'all had told me sooner. I'd have learned how to make the roti my goddamn self. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and got a whole pack of them. I'm just telling you, man, is imagine though what that did to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And see, here's the cold part about it. The hints start coming in my ears at about 10 years old. That may not be your real daddy. Oh, I can't believe that. I love my daddy. My daddy's my super, my black superhero. You know, the man I'm named after, Mr. Sperling. Love, black lawyer, played football at UCLA. That's my daddy. I had my own personal superhero. And now you telling me that ain't my daddy? And then it's like, so my mama lied to me? And then I asked him, are you my daddy? He said, of course I am. But then come to find out he knew, too. That he wasn't my daddy. He kind of knew. So I'm saying they had DNA tests back then. So imagine what that did. You see why I don't fuck with nobody. You see why I'm so mean now? Why you don't trust people as far as you can throw them? Well, I gravitated towards the gangsterism and the D-boys and the hood niggas. Yeah. I had an attitude where I like to fight. By the grace of God, I'm here. Yeah. That that'll put a chip on your shoulder. Ladies. All your sons ain't going to end up like me. All of them are not going to be just as ornery or mean enough or just angry enough to say, uh, I'm going to do the right thing. Most of them are going to do the wrong things. Most. They're going to take it out of themselves or they're going to take it out on society. You're not guaranteed. I, I survived my predicament. It did not make me better. I survived it and I learned from it. There's special people on this Internet. The reason you guys gravitate to us is because we have a certain quality. There's something about me that says there's something about this guy. And even the motherfuckers that don't like me, y'all still listen because it's like, damn, damn, there's something about this dude. It's because I know what you're going through. I've been through the heartache. I just mask it better than y'all and I compartmentalize it and I still go through and do what I got to do. But it's a fucked up situation. So when I talk to, talk to you all about paternity fraud, it's personal to me because it's real. I come from the perspective of the child that was affected by the adults that made decisions before he even had to make a decision for himself. Think about that. Yeah. But uh, Alvin, go ahead and put your link in the chat room. So you, yes, can sir. Me, good folk over there, and y'all. Y'all gonna be, be over there. My voice is uh, ain't what it's supposed to be, man. You know, yes, I'm, sir. 
I've been yelling at the internet for like a week straight. Well, the internet is you, 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 <laughs> you and the internet, boy. <laughs> Yo, I'm, 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 I'm at a tree. I'm like yelling at the internet. That's my mouth. Beyonce said, you be on the internet yelling at the internet. I can barely sleep. I'm like, well, yeah, I know, baby. I'm sorry. I well, Dennis, how's, the call? how's the cough? Everything all right with the cough? The what? The cough you had. Like, I was worried Hell, about the goddamn cough. Hell, goddamn, no, ain't all right. I'm losing my goddamn voice yelling at y'all. mad at y'all, man. <laughs> y'all let that white gal come up in here and lie to y'all. And Never mind. I talked about that the yeah. other day. Yeah. Somebody yeah. pin this to the top right here. And then, but see, even on that, it make us all look bad. You yeah. let the white girl, girl come up in here and make us look like fools. You see, you make us look weak. We look like them ancestors y'all complain about all the time who was simps. So y'all say, I wouldn't do what they did. You're doing the same thing because y'all got the same culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My man, big man, seven, nine, seven, seven, said again, codfish, curry, goat, oxtail, manish, what? Yeah, all of that. I wasn't eating. I was mad at all of that when I was, I ain't eating that. I want some grits. I don't eat that. <laughs> I don't eat that. I eat grits over. I don't eat no what goat. I ain't no goat. A goat is that's, a pet. That's weird. <laughs> that's weird. I don't food, eat that. Man. My grandma say don't eat no goats. We don't eat no <laughs> goats. We eat pig feet. Same <laughs> shit. Same nigga food, right? Because that's better. Me. <laughs> well, right, right, right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, man, you can't escape who you are, man. You know, but anyway, uh, y'all go and hang out with Al- uh, Alvin over there, man. Uh, the link yeah, to his uh, channel. Go ahead and click on that. And y'all yeah. go on over there. And uh, please build on this conversation. You know? cool. Let's talk about yeah. it like men and build on it. And uh, and then this is a conversation for all men. I know I've been having some blackity black moments all goddamn week. Because I've been having to talk to these black men. And uh, it's necessary. But this is a conversation for all men. My man... Uh, uh, Cerebral Inquire, did Obsidian reach out to you about tomorrow? Uh, no, ain't nobody reached out to me. Rum cake. Yeah, rum cake. I always like the rum cake shit. But, rum uh, cake's the bomb, though. Yeah, man. But uh, anyway, family, y'all be blessed. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Like, like I said, Alvin is going to hold court over there, man. Y'all, gonna, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to Alvin's page. I done told y'all before, I ain't going to be in this motherfucker forever. I'm already rich. I'm subject to quit any day. Okay. Any day. Any goddamn day. I'll be like, what happened to Uncle D? Nigga's gone. The nigga moved. <laughs> we don't know. We got an APB out on. We don't know. Next time y'all see me somewhere skinny on the beach with some little babies and just speaking uh, goddamn Spanish and shit. <laughs> I mean, what you want? Look cute ass, little fat face baby. Not fucking with none of y'all, all right? So y'all better start. And what I try to do is cultivate the talent. Yeah. Uh, people who I see who have promise, who have the will and the drive. And I, you know, that's why I'm sending y'all over there to Alvin. Let's help Alvin get a thousand people sometime in the next month. I'd like to do yeah. that. Uh, yeah, and thank you. he's a good brother. He's just hanging in there. And then all these regulars over here, man, y'all go over there and talk to this young brother. He got more longevity. My ass is old. <laughs> Anyway, God bless you. I'll be yelling at y'all tomorrow. <laughs> I'll That's, be right. Tomorrow. I'll That's right. That's right. That's what I do. Yell at the internet in That's the middle right. of the night. Either That's way, right. man, God bless y'all. Love you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. Don't get that twist. I do love y'all. Yeah, but uh, I got to go. Uncle D, <laughs> I'm out.